key to distortion on the bass is completely different than it is to guitar. When you distort right. a guitar sound, as most people will know, you, you want to distort the whole sound. You uh -huh. want the sound to be distorted. With a bass, you have to be careful with that. Using a normal distortion box on a bass will make things very muddy, and then you lose your fundamental, you lose your tightness, you, you lose the big picture, basically, with right. bass guitar. So with this thing, the way that it nails certain frequencies mm -hmm. and doesn't disturb the fundamental, yeah. um, unless you want to disturb the fundamental, right. but you have the capability of leaving that fundamental alone and retaining your low end, retaining your impact, your punch, your clarity, yeah. your overall tasty bass goodness, mm -hmm. and then distorting where you need to and how you need to, it, it just makes for a, uh, a much better end result. It really does. Cool. Flexibility is not something that's always taken into account. So with this particular pedal, um, I think that the fact that it sounds good is paramount, but the fact that it has six available presets that can be stored um, makes it kind of a... Without sounding like a commercial, it makes it a very cool standalone uh -huh. item for guys like me. Right. That I know I've got the flexibility that I need, that I can take those sounds and I can use them on the fly. I can program them into this system that I've got and know that I'm going to get the same cool sounds and that I can change them and not have to have Stay six right pedals. There. Uh -huh. You know? Yeah. That, that do the same thing. I use four presets of the six that are available on the, on the multi-wave bass distortion pedal and... Uh, Going down this list, we use it on uh, Animal, we use it on Foolin, we use it on Rock On, uh, Rocket, Pour Some Sugar On Me, and Rock of Ages. All of those songs, we use distortion patches. For the rest of the set, we use the first preset, which is set up in the clean boost function with just a tiny bit of low end added and a little bit of clean gain added, and it just makes the sound go from bigger to biggest uh -huh. and uh, it's a very pleasant little addition to the big picture allowing nice. it just allows the bass to, to really breathe to really it opens it up and really lets it breathe our front of house engineer is also the band's producer so he's been sort of working with me all along the way and he's very very happy with the sound as well as I said we use the clean boost on primarily all of them with the exception of the animal and Foolin presets are uh, very similar for animal and Foolin. We're using the third preset in the normal range. I pretty much stay within that normal range for okay. most of this stuff. That's a good normal. We go from there to, why don't I take you a step back, and that is the, the main bass sound right there, which is, again, clean boost with EQ, uh -huh. with a slight nudge down on the low end, right. and the clean mix is giving it just a tiny bit of overall gain. Um, again, the Foolin distortion sound number three on the dial. This is the rocket bass sound, okay. which is, I guess you would say, halfway in between clean boost and your first distortion preset. You can see where the EQ is quite a bit more extensive on that particular preset. Again, that is for rocket. Sugar is the same distortion. Pour some sugar on me is the same distortion with a flat EQ, but with a more pronounced distortion mix on it. And then Rock of Ages. Uh, yes, we've gone back to using the same preset that we use for Animal and Fool in there, which is number three with a nudge in the low end. We must die, and the fire was gone. 